When the teams at the frontiers of aviation science have done their work well, this is the sort of aircraft that emerges, Concorde. pounds of thrust out of four reheated Olympi engines, uh, taking an aeroplane which is probably down to 120 tons into the air. That's flying. The aeroplane is just like my flight. Very precise, very sensitive to, to handle. Flies faster than a rifle bullet. It's exciting to sit at 60,000 feet and see the curvature of the Earth. It's exciting to sit at 60,000 feet and see the dark uh, of outer space. To have a horizon to horizon, 750 mile range. That's exciting. When you take off to New York in the dark and see the sun rise in the west, you know you're doing something slightly different. But you're catching the sun. And what do you reckon the time will be for the diesel? Well, we're running uh, pretty west. On the log time, we're about uh, eight minutes down, so. Right. sadly is now dead, uh, said, Brian, I'll, I'll show you that the Concorde can do a complete barrel roll. And I said, come on, you're pulling my leg. He said, no, we'll do it. And so we climbed up to 15,000 feet, 350 knots, 10 degrees of pitch angle, and he did a complete barrel roll in it, just keeping positive G on all the way over. He said, I've been one way, Brian, you better unwind it, so I had to take it back the other way. And that, to me, was one of the most exciting things, because it showed me what Concorde could do. We don't do it with passengers on, <laughs> of course. But it, it, the, the confidence that it gave me, not that I needed any more in the aeroplane, was enormous. You know, this, this magnificent ship could actually turn upside down and continue perfectly safely. Nothing fell off, no red lights, no instruments toppling. In the history of aviation, no other single vehicle has remained at the top of the stack for 10 years. Concorde has been there for 10, it will be there for another 10. To me, it is the epitome of excellence in aviation. At 4.43 and 15 seconds, Captain Marty pulls on the control stick. Concorde takes to the air. This is how Concorde flight AF4590 appears to witnesses. Martine Bournet works in an office on the western edge of the airport. At 4.44, she sees a terrifying sight. I was looking out of my window and I saw Concorde taking off very slowly with the back of the plane on fire. I was really afraid. Because of the flames, I was convinced that the plane was going to explode right here in front of the office. The stricken airliner flies directly overhead. While Captain Marty struggles with the controls to gain altitude, out of his vision, flames engulf the left wing. The sickening sight is caught on camera by the wife of a truck driver. It is the only video footage ever captured showing Concorde on fire. It'll prove to be a vital link in the investigation. Captain Marty is running out of options. Concorde's left wing is disintegrating. Businessman Patrick Tess is directly in the plane's path. I was in my office, talking to an agency. The window faces the runway, and I was interrupted by an incredible noise. It was Concorde. It was on fire, and it was listing violently.
Concord lurches to the left. The plane stalls and plunges to the ground. It's 4.45. It's the moment every air traffic controller dreads. Gilles Rogelin reaches for his mic. I've called the Air France and I said, Air France 4590, do you hear me? I said it twice. The supersonic jet, loaded with fuel and 109 people on board, crashes right on top of a hotel on the outskirts of Gonesse. A terrifying fireball tears through the building. British teacher, Alice Brooking, has just checked into a first floor room. So I went straight for the door of the room that I was in. Saw all the flames, saw there was no way out by the stairs. I leapt across the room, leapt across the bed to the window. Saw, luckily, that the receptionist was already down in the car park underneath me, and he just said, you have to jump. At the same time, Christine Turpin also witnesses the explosion and fears the worst. It fell, and from where I was, I thought it had landed on the gas station. And I thought, because my daughter and the girl who works for me were there, that they were all dead. As Christine Turpin drives in, a passenger armrest falls onto the petrol station. Within eight minutes of the crash, dozens of fire engines and ambulances race to the scene. An appalling tragedy, not just for those on Concord, but for those in the hotel. Regional Fire Chief Colonel Fabrice Chauvin leads the rescue. Whilst driving, there were many things going through my mind. The important thing for me was to divide the operation into two separate parts. One, the aircraft crash, extinguishing the fire and the rescue of any survivors. And two, organizing treatment for the wounded before they were evacuated to hospital. The intensity of the fire is so great that it'll take three hours to bring it under control. As these TV news images show, the charred remains of the airliner and the hotel are unrecognizable. The rescue attempts are futile. 113 people die, four from the hotel and 109 passengers and crew in Concord.